Hi. Yeah, the Olivet is back on the table. These are the M380 XP3 model. They're big and they are heavy. So I'll move the camera closer to you and we'll have a walk around it. Well, I'll turn the computer if I can, as it's heavy. And we will have a look at what it offers from the outside. I will open one of them up because I want us also to check the power supply before we actually turn it on. Just so you know that these are the Intel 386 and they are running at 20 megahertz. They are fast. So before we look at this baby, I want you to quickly have a brief introduction to the two other ones. So let me just move the camera a little bit closer. And the reason why I have them over here, so this one is the same as the other one over there, but there's also a smaller model, which is an M380 stash C model. So as you can see, if I move this a little bit over, <clears throat> it's kind of like missing this area. And when we look at the other computer, you will figure out, or I'll explain that inside here, there's a hard disk. So this has a hard disk here, and then it comes with a tape drive. Let me put it over to the other computer. This doesn't have the hard disk over there. It has a hard disk down here, but it's more or less the same. So it's Intel 386 computers inside. This is 16 megahertz, these are 20. Let me move the camera around and let's have a look at this baby. So let's have a closer look. Over here, well, of course, we have the beautiful Olivetti M380 XP3 logo. The Italia branding down here, that actually means that this computer was produced especially for the Italian market, so not outside Italy. It's supposed just to be sold in Italy. We move over here, on the top we have a three and a quarter inch drive, five and, sorry, three and a half inch, five and a quarter, and here we have this tape drive that holds carriages like this. These carriages is a 16 megabyte. I think the maximum is like 120 megabyte that you could have for the cartridges. So that's it. There's some lighting down here, which is probably the lighting for this key lock here. I don't have the key, sadly. So this will probably light up once this is turned on, if it's locked, but it's in unlock position. This one over here is the lighting for indicating if the hard disk is working, well, if operating. Here we have a loudspeaker volume thing. Here we have a reset button another lighting that tells whether or not the computer is on and off and this is the on and off button. Let's move it a little bit around. It has some scarfings but besides that it's actually clean and it's okay. It's, it's, it's not bad. There's a little bit of stuff on the sides but it's, fi it's fine. Easy to fix. So on the back we have the power in we have some power out, which is usually used for a monitor on top of us. Here we have the keyboard connector. This is a DIN 9. I will come back to this DIN connector because there's a story behind this one. And yeah, well, this one is unfixable. So this is broken, but we'll see what we can do. Down here we have a serial and we have a parallel port up here, which seems to be the same DIN 25 port as this one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this is. This is the VGA output. This is a network card. These are for coax. And the last side, it's a little bit of scratching down there and up here, but besides that, it's all good. So let me just crack it open and we'll look at the card. I'll take out the individual cards and I will explain to you what they are. 
So here it is without the casing and we can now have a look inside it. Over on this side, this is the hard disk. We'll come back to that part of this huge computer, but all of this, that's just hard disk. In the back here, we have the power supply. Um, I briefly looked at it when I opened up the casing and this looks like all the other M240 or M24, M28, M280. It looks like the same power supply. So that will be an easy repair if there was any problems with that one. So the goal is just to rip out the card now so we can get easy access to the power supply because we need to test the power supply before we actually turn on the computer just to see if it gives out the right voltages. So we have some cards. One, two, three, four, five cards. Let me pull out some of them and I'll give you a brief description of the card and then we'll take a deep dive afterwards. So the first card, that's, oh, sorry, focus. <laughs> the first card, this is a memory card. This memory card is called ME915. It's from 1088. Next card. That's a network card, which is coax. It's actually a beautiful card, but as I don't have any coax network, so I won't be able to use it. And um, I was just looking for, there we go. So this is called Geo 527 slash A. And this is two years later. So this is 1090. So this is a card that has been aftermarked into this computer. Next card. That's absolutely VGA. This is actually the, this is the typical paradise uh, graphics card in more or less all Olivetti computers. Um, this one is called GO481. This is also from 10, 88. This is, let me turn it around. These, uh, yes. So this is 256 kilobyte. So we'll come back to this one also. This is actually a very nice card. This is not just a VGA. This is Olivetti's VGA. Next card has a ribbon connected up here. And I looked at it and this actually goes down to the tape streamer in the bottom of the casing. So this is then the tape drive controller. There we go. And if we should have a number. So this is Geo 725 11th 88. So this is the one that drives this one. And I will assume this is an external connection, just like, sorry, just like this one up here. So this is probably if you wanted to add some extra tape drives externally. But as again, we'll come back to this card also. The last card, as I see, that is then, oh, there we go, sorry. Um, this is then the um, hard disk controller card. This is from, am I right? Yes, Western Digital. And it's called Geo 728, also from 10th 88. So this can drive to MFM or RL hard disk. I'm not sure which of them it is. We'll come back to that also. Well, this is actually also very pretty neat card. So this is gain us access to the computer inside. Before we do anything, I just briefly want to remove the clock battery or CMOS battery. I'll fix this with new batteries. I already have the new batteries and we'll just take this out and put on new batteries. So what I then need to do now is to gain access into the computer. Let me see. 
like this, like this. And then I'll check out the cabling for the discs. Like this. Then I should now be able, uh, pre I pre-unscrewed these, so there we go. There we go. And this is then the tip drive. So here we have this tape drive that can hold the carriage, carriages, sorry, and it has a rubber belt and this usually totally disintegrates, but this actually looks okay-ish. So maybe if we are lucky, this tape will actually work. I'll take this aside, it'll be for another episode. That should give us access to the power supply. So I know there's a screw down there that I need to unscrew. And then there's a screw usually up here. This has, I've screwed it off. So I should be able to pull that out. So let me just move this away, take out the power supply, and we will have a closer look at the actual power supply and test it. One piece of power supply, it's a little bit dusty. So these are the typical Olivetti power supplies from the late 80s. So it's more or less the same as in the M24, the SP, the M28, the 280 and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing. So you have the high voltage down here and you have the low voltage part up here. So let me just unscrew these blow this with some good air so I can clean it off and then I'll come back and then we can test it. So that wasn't bad at all. It was just dust. More or less nothing came on the cotton stuff. So we did it. Before I rinsed it in isoprol alcohol um, IPA, I smelled it to see if I could smell some fish smell because that's usually a sign that some of the capacitors have been leaked. There's nothing. Looked at all the capacitors, there is absolutely nothing that tells me that something is wrong. I also looked at all the connections and did some testing and everything is okay. The only thing I just forgot, but just remembered now, is I need to test the fuse. So let me get the fuse out. I need a tiny screwdriver here and slowly and we take this one over to continuity and we should have so that one is working so all that's left now is we need to assemble it back put it in casing, find some power cable, and put the both voltmeters on it, and let's test it. So let me do that. All assembled. Let's... Um, Start hooking it up. Need to measure. So, this one obviously went down here. This is the five volt rail. Over here we have the 12, but we can also get it from here. So, if we take ground, five volt, sorry, like that. Yeah. And then let's hook something in there. So we should go here. And we should be able a little bit of lock. Orange usually is 12 volt rail. So be able to do this. There. Let me see if the camera gets it. 
Are we? I'm not sure. Let's see. So, 12 volts from this one and 5 volts from this one. 3, 2, 1, go! Looks all fine. 11.48, 5.3, there's no load, so that's fine. Working! So, day two, computer number two, and no need for me to show you how to rip out stuff within this computer. You already saw that, but here's the power supply, and I thought we probably need to test that also. So. Let's hook it up some more meters and see if we can get some power on it. So again, orange on Olivetti is that 12 volt rail. And over here, and underneath it, this is the five volt. Both voltmeters are turned on. There we go. And I'll hook the power in. And let's turn it on. Seems that we have a power supply that's not working. This one over here, 12 volt rail again. This is giving me 3 volt, 3.2. And this over here is giving, this is 5 volt, that's giving me nothing. So, yet another power supply we need to look into. So, let's do that. So, here we have the power supply. And it's from August 87. And when I look at all the stuff inside it, there seems to be nothing that's like bulging or anything. I can't see anything that should be wrong anywhere. No leakage of anything. It doesn't smell. There's nothing. But if I turn it around. And this is why I do this handheld somebody has been in this power supply these soldering that's not original that's like even worse i'm not good at soldering but i'm not that bad so somebody has already been in this power supply and i think if i look up here this is saying Something with 94. So somebody has messed with this power supply. So I think the only thing I can do is to really clean all of this and desolder all the connection again and test all the rails, sorry, all the uh, connections and see if there's any connection that's broken and then we'll take it from there because I think that could be the reason. So let me do that and once that's done, we'll turn it on again. So let's clean it off with some IPA first just to see if that actually gets rid of some of the stuff. There's no doubt in my mind that somebody has been, if you compare this soldering, that's a, like a blob to all the other ones that's all on the plate. And if I touch it, even though I just cleaned it, it's sticky, it's gluey. So something probably has been leaking and somebody has been changing something on the board. So this is going to be a mystery. We'll try to see if we can solve it. This is the, we just saw the low voltage part. This is the high voltage part. I just want to show it again. 
Look at these four ones there. And look at this one over there. And this one up there. That's not the same thing as all the rest of the soldering. I am really, really sure that somebody has been, look at this one, somebody has been trying to fix it. And it's also sticky. It's a mystery. So I looked at it. I tested all the connections and it actually seems that they are correct. So before I start randomly <laughs> removing stuff from the board to see and measure stuff, I thought, why not bring up computer number one? So here's the power supply. So I thought, why not swap it a bit around and then test. So if I start seeing because I know power supply number one is, is working. High voltage, low voltage. So if I take the good high voltage and power up this one, if this works, I know it's this one that's failing. If it doesn't work, I will have to try the other way around to see if the high voltage that's not working. So let me build this together. So. This is computer two, this is computer one. So high voltage from computer one, low voltage, low voltage from computer two. So let me put this together. So, three, two, one, go. Still the same problem. So we are narrowing it down. So we have a good high voltage power supply working that we know that works, but we're still getting not enough voltage from the low voltage area. So this means that the low voltage that's in there, this one is not working. There's something wrong there. I suspected that, but now we narrowed it down. Just for fun, let's swap it around and see if I put the good one from computer number one with this one over there from computer number two, high voltage, low voltage, and then this should work. So I swapped it around. So, now this one has the high voltage from computer two and the low voltage from computer number one. So let's see, this should work. There shouldn't be any doubt about this working, but let's just try it. Three, two, one. And yes, obviously this would work. So this is 11.5 and this is 5.3. So this works. The low part from computer number two doesn't work. So I um, looked at all the capacitors and I changed four. And the reason I only changed four of them was that I, my arsenal of the stock I have of capacitors is minimal. So I don't have all of them and it still doesn't work. This is power supply number two. So let's leave it by this and we will in another episode come back to this power supply and let's go back to computer number one with power supply number one that works. So I put the power supply back in now that we know that it's working. So let me just hook it to the motherboard. After that, I will take the graphics card and the memory card and put them in also. Then we'll put some power on it and I'll hook up a monitor and a keyboard and we'll see if it actually boots. Um, if not, we will have to investigate what could be wrong. 
let's hope for the best. So let me just put all of this in. Monitor hooked in, keyboard hooked in, power on the back. Let me just turn it on and we'll see. I was told when I got these that they're not working. So I don't expect anything. I, yeah, well, let's just see. So I'll turn on the monitor and the computer. It beeps. It doesn't see anything in the graphics card. That's it. Nothing else. The keyboard has the, all the three LEDs turned on. So it seems that, yes, this doesn't work. So either it's the motherboard on the back, it's this back plane, or it's one of the cards. I suspect this one. And let me turn this one off. And turn off the monitor. And I will actually tell you why I expect this one. Because when I look at this, and I at the same time look at the schematics for this card, this just doesn't add up. I actually think somebody stole some of these from this card. Because um, this card can either be populated one megabyte, two megabyte, four megabytes or two, eight and 16, depending on what type it is and how much you have populated with. At no state in the documentation, I will go through it, shows it that you only have three banks put in. It's always four. So I expect actually somebody stole RAM from up there. So what I want to do now is I want to open up the other one, take out that card because this card is essential for the computer because this is the only memory on the computer. The actual motherboard itself has no memory on it. It's provided by this one. So let me grab the other, I'll open the other one up and then I'll just grab the card. So hold on for a second. So this is the card, uh, the card that we're talking about. This is the card from the other one. And I think I'm right. So as expected, somebody stole this RAM from this card up there. So let's just put this one into this and see if that then works. Let's turn it on. And it's working. Sorry. There you go. The computer actually boots. So somebody stole some RAM from this card. Perfect. It tells us that it has two megabytes. So the, this card is populated with two megabytes. According to the documentation, I can see that it's, it, that's, that's actually correct. So. We have a computer that's actually booting now. Obviously, there's a lot of problems here with the BIOS settings. It doesn't know anything because we hooked up, took out the battery and I need to create a new battery and put it in and then we'll take it from there. Let me close the computer down. Let's, let me dust it and then I'll put in all the cards back into it again. Um, and then we'll have to turn it around and we'll have a look at the motherboard. Uh, just to see what that holds. What is the motherboard inside a big computer like this one? We know that it's an 386 and it's DX and it's uh, running at 20 megahertz. But let's just have a closer look at that. We'll figure out how to get into it, turn it around and stuff like that. So hold on, I will just clean the computer and come back to you. 
So let me um, just take the lid off the back. I unscrewed four screws here. So pulls this way. The motherboard itself looks nice and clean, but there's a lot of gaps between the individual components. And the fact is just that this is because there's no memory on this board. As we know, it's on the memory expansion card. So there's no memory, which makes it more clean. In the front, we have the power, then we have the reset button. We have a volume control for the speaker up here, and then the key. In this area over here, that's where we have the actual Intel 386 CPU. This is the DX version running at 20 megahertz. Down here, I uh, should actually use my screwdriver. Down here we have the crystal, which is a 40 megahertz. So that's divided by two to run this one up here. If we move into the middle of the actual motherboard, this area is where we have the BIOS. So this one and this one. So this, sorry, I'm using the finger again. I should use the screwdriver. So this is the high and this is the low of the BIOS, but there are two empty slots. That's because you could actually put in your own BIOS extension into this board. If we move up here, obviously this is the serial con uh, port and this is the parallel port. The serial port, that's driven by this controller up here. And the parallel port is then driven by this controller up here. We also then have the keyboard input here, and that's driven by this chip down there. Over here, this area, we have the floppy disk controller part, which then drives the floppy disk, um, which is connected here via this cable. In extension to the BIOS memory, we also have some a non-volatile RAM up here, just a tiny bit. And if I briefly should explain, in this BIOS area here, that is the one that actually supports the date and the time and the system board memory size and how you extend it, what kind of floppy disks you have, A and B, and what kind of hard disk, you know, C and D, and the MAT processor, how it's driven or drives the MAT processor and the CRT display type. So these settings are, are within these buyers, but that leaves a lot of other stuff that needs to be handled, which is not handled within the actual buyers. It's handled within the non-volatile RAM up here. So that could be, for instance, the parallel, the serial port, and some memory testing, and some IOs, and all those sorts of stuff, the rest, basically, that's handled via this um, eight-legged chip up here. So all in all, it's a fairly simple board when you look at the year it was made in. Not that many chips, but a lot of the logic chips because obviously we don't at this time have any chipset on a board like this. So let me put the cover back on again and let's wrap this episode up for now. That was a big one, right? And heavy. I think this is time for us to wrap this episode one up and pick it up on another time. There's a lot to do within the computer. I know I have two of them. The one will be a spare part, so I'm not gonna do anything specific into that. You saw I looked into the power supplies of both of them and on number two computer, the power supply is sadly not working. It's the low part, so it should be fairly easy-ish to figure out what's wrong, but I will leave it because again, it's a spare machine for when something is wrong with this one. We also saw in the beginning that the memory card, um, somebody has been nibbling around with the memory sticks. I looked into my 
boxes and I actually discovered that I have a few of them laying around. So I'm actually able to, to populate one of the boards. So that's a nice thing, but again, it's a spare one. So what I'm, what I want to do in another episode, of course, is to move all the RAM from this into the other board, including the missing ones. So instead of this being two, we should then be able to have four megabyte of RAM within the machine. So I like to thank you for watching this. You know what to do. There's this one and then this one and please do remember to subscribe this is how you get notified when i produce new material for the youtube channel again thank you and as this actually is the last video that i'll be producing this year in 2021 i would like to wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year and i'll be seeing you around in 2022 with a lot of new stuff i have already got a lot of new packages that needs to be unwrapped so i'll have to make a tech mail episode also about all of that yeah it's coming in and i'm really honored that people are sending me all the good stuff to watch me so that i can open it up together with all of you and we can enjoy whatever it may be I also want to focus next year on um, some of the non-Olivetti computers. I will wrap up a few things regarding Olivetti, but I will then try to move over to some of the other stuff that I have. So some of the stuff will be about the Casio computer line. I have some interesting pieces that I want to show you. And then I'll also have some Ataris and Amstrads that I would like to bring on the table and have a look inside because some of them are not working and some of them need some tweaking and stuff like that. So 2022 will be a more combination of those kind of computers together with the Olivetti's. But I kind of like think I need to park Olivetti for a bit and do some other stuff. But thank you for watching. Hope to see you in 2022 and goodbye.